Hi, and welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you how to animate a tire, or at least one method of animating a tire traveling across a ground plane. We're going to have the tire leave a depression into the ground, as if it's traveling over snow or some soft sand. We're also going to have the tire leave behind some tire tracks. Let's start off by setting up our project. Now, we've got some guys in the back that are uh, cutting down trees or whatever, so if you hear any of that in the background, my apologies. Hope it's not too distracting. All right, I'm going to go to File, down the Project, over to New. I'm going to name this project Tire Tracks. And I'm going to browse, and I'm going to put this onto my desktop. I'm going to use default names for all these subfolders. So I'm going to click on this button down here at the bottom that says Use Defaults. Click Accept. Now if we look on my desktop, we'll see our project folder. If we open that up, we'll see all the uh, subfolders with the default names that we told Maya to use. I went to cgtextures.com and downloaded a couple of textures. I have a snow texture here, it's uh, 0085, if anyone wants the exact same texture. And I also have a picture of a tire tread from cgtextures.com as well, and this is actually 0073, the file. So if y'all want the exact same uh, files, that way uh, you can do that. Alright, I'm going to take both of those files, those textures, I'm going to drop it inside the source images subfolder. Go back inside Maya. I'm going to go ahead and do a save, and I'll name this tire tracks underscore one. So the first phase of our project. Now we're ready to start modeling. We need to model a ground plane and we need to model a tire. So let's go ahead and start with a ground plane. Create polygon primitives plane options box. I'm going to make it kind of big, so let's do 100 by 100. Everything else I'll just leave default. Create. I'm going to hide my grid just so it doesn't slow my computer down any. Our ground is kind of flat, so let's make it a little more interesting. I'm going to do that by selecting the vertices, or actually just go in the vertices select mode. I'm going to go make sure I'm in my polygon menu set, go up to the select menu, down to select using constraints. Inside this box, I'm going to select all and next. Right underneath that, you'll see an option for inside, so I'm going to select inside. That means it's going to only select vertices that are inside our mesh, and it's not going to select anything on the border. I'm also going to turn on this random, that way it randomly selects vertices. And the ratio is asking what percentage of the vertices do we want to select. And I'm going to select 0.3, which is 30%. So somewhere close to 0.3. And also up here at the top, that all in next, that just means it's going to select all the vertices automatically. I don't have to drag or select anything. All right. I'm going to use my move tool and lift those vertices up. So something about, about that far. And then in this box, I'm going to click on the button that says Close and Reset. Go back to Object Mode. I'm going to go up to Polygon Menu Set. Under the Mesh Menu, down to Smooth. Options, everything is default. Smooth. Now our ground mesh looks a little more interesting than just being flat. Now one thing worth mentioning is that when we deform this mesh, the more dense our mesh is, the better the deformation will look. So we want a nice dense mesh, but we don't want it so dense it's going to uh, cause my computer to crash. If you have a powerful computer, then you could probably make a more denser mesh than I can. Uh, if you've got a slower, a really slow computer, then you may not be able to make it as dense. So over here in the channel box with the ground plane selected, under the input nodes you'll see a poly smooth face, that's the smooth that we just did. If you click on it, it will expand, and then we'll see divisions. I'm going to increase that divisions to 3. That gives me a nice, pretty dense mesh to work with. Alright, I'm going to open up my outliner. So over here on the left-hand side of my screen, there's a button that says Perspective slash Outliner. I'm going to click that, and now I can see my plane out there. I'm just going to double-click on it, and I'm going to rename it to Ground. Alright, I'm going to do a save. Now let's create our tire. We need a tire to animate, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a polygon pipe. Use my move tool to move that out of the way. Okay, let me pull my wireframe up to kind of explain this, because since it's a tutorial, I don't want to just do everything. I want you to really understand uh, how this all works, especially for those who have a hard time learning than others, possibly. Let me orient this the right way. All right. The way we're going to animate or deform this mesh is by attaching particles everywhere there is a vertice or vertex. 
And as the particles move, those vertices will move as well. So we need our object to make contact with the vertices on this mesh right here. So if our object, this tire, is so small that it's not hitting any of the vertices, it's not really going to do anything. It's not going to deform our mesh like we want it to. Now if we have it really big, now it's hitting a bunch of vertices, so we'll get a really, really super nice looking uh, deformation. But we don't want a tire that big compared to our ground plane. So what I'm going to do is, let me just undo, go back. I'm just going to scale this up to where it's going to hit maybe two or three rows of these vertices. So maybe something, maybe something about this big right there. So I'm hitting one, two, three, three vertices across that center. It's a little bit wide, so let me kind of narrow that down some. All right, so we're hitting two vertices. I might make a little bit more wide just to maybe hit one more. I don't know. That's probably good there. We'll see. If we have to, later on, we can always make it bigger. But we'll see how this works. I'm going to move it to where it's not touching my ground plane. If you do an animation and your tire is touching the ground plane, then it's going to grab vertices and pull the ground vertices, whatever is touching it, it's going to pull those with the animation. We don't want that. So I'm just going to back it off some so it's not touching. I'm not going to model a wheel, but I will just make it look a little better. So let's select a couple of edge loops there. Edit Mesh, Bevel, Channel Box, under the input nodes I'm going to change the offset, say maybe, maybe 0.3. Let's do a smooth, see what it looks like. Alright, there we go. So something that looks like a tire. Let's go ahead and name it. So over here in the outliner, I'm just going to double click and name it Tire. I'm going to do a save. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to create a path for our tire to follow. We want the path to follow the contour of our ground plane. So what we want to do is we want to select our ground plane. Let me turn the wireframe off now. I'm going to select the ground plane. I'm going to go up to, let me delete the history on it first. So edit, delete by type history. All right, I'm going to go under the, the, under the Modify menu, down to Make Live. We know it's live now because it's a dark green mesh. And what that means is if we draw a curve, the curve is going to stay, or at least try to stay, on the surface of our ground mesh, on this live surface. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our Create menu, down to CV Curve Tool, and let's just start creating a path for our tire to follow. Now, don't get your points too far apart. So I'm going to keep mine closer together like I don't want to put a point there and then a point there a point there and then one more and I'm all the way across let me hit delete go back I'm gonna start putting them more closer like that that way we can adjust it afterwards if it's if there's any places where it's uh, below the surface all right I'm just gonna kind of follow this valley and maybe take it up over this hill right here and just kind of create an interesting look hopefully Alright, I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see it's kind of disappearing in the ground in a couple of places. So what I'm going to do is, if you don't have your curve selected and you need to select it, it's kind of hard to select it here. Well, we can select it easy because our ground plane is uh, still live. We don't need that live anymore, so let's go ahead and deselect everything. Go back up to our modify menu and click on make not live. Alright, so now it's definitely harder to get select that curve. So just select it in your outliner over here on the left. So curve. I'm going to go ahead and rename the curve to Animation Curve. Okay, in our view panel, I'm just going to right click somewhere, select Control Vertex, and now I can go in here with my Move tool and just start moving some vertices so that my curve is laying on top of my ground plane. Alright, also right here at this end, I'm going to pull it past, that way our tire travels a little bit beyond our ground plane. And it's a, probably a buzz. Let me just lower this down. There we go. Just want to make sure it follows the uh, ground plane all the way. Okay, let's do the same thing on this end. I'm going to grab and pull this over to where our tire is. Maybe spread these out a little bit more.
pull this up so our curves above the ground and let me readjust this one all right looks good so now that our curve is complete it's extending beyond the ground plane I go back to object mode I'm going to select everything go and delete the history on everything delete by type history and I'm going to do a save all right the next thing we need to do is to attach our tire to our animation curve so I'm going to select the tire and then I'm going to press hold down the control button and then select the animation curve I'm doing that in the outliner I'm going to go up to the animation menu set and then underneath the animate menu all the way down the motion path and then over to attach to motion path but I'm going to select the options box in this options edit reset settings everything's default right now I'm going to go to the start and end time. Now I've already played with this so I know that a good speed of my tire going across this ground plane is 150 frames. So I just did some trial and error uh, before I did this tutorial just so I didn't have any uh, hiccups. Alright, end time I'm going to make 150 and I'm not going to worry about this front or up axis yet because I, I don't think I froze transformations on this wheel, this tire, after I turned it so I'm not sure what the orientation on my tire is but we can change that afterwards it's no big deal I'm just going to click on attach and you can see our tire is not the correct orientation alright we need to fix that we don't want to do it by rotating our wheel what we want to do is we want to select our tire open up the attribute editor and at the very top you'll see a motion path node or a tab just click on it and now if you look down you'll see the front axis right there and the up axis so it looks like we want the up axis to be the X so if we look at my manipulator handle I want this side of my tire to be pointing up so the up axis needs to be X and the front axis uh, I believe Z there we go so now my tire is pointing oriented the right way so just keep playing with those until you get it the way it's supposed to look now let's go ahead and run our animation to see what we what we have all right, I need to increase my animation time because right now it's limited to 24 frames. I'm going to just go ahead and change it to 200 frames because our animation curve is 150 frames. So I want it to be at least my time slider. I want it to be at least 150. So I just went ahead and made it 200. So now let's do our animation. All right, so I like that speed going across there. I'm going to stop it about right there. I can see that my tire is too far into the ground. So I'm going to select the curve, the animation curve, and I'm going to use my move tool to lift that up until the tire is as deep into the ground as I want it. So if we had some really hard packed snow, we might just go in a little bit. Or if you had some like mud or some really soft snow, you might even bring it down even more or like really deep like that. <laughs> so it's whatever your preference is. I'm going to lower mine probably about, maybe about like, not too far, maybe about like that. So maybe it's some kind of a hard packed snow, just sort of. Rewind. And now we should see our tire follow the contours of our ground, which it does. So if I do that a little slower, goes over the hill, goes down to the valley, and then up over, and then back down. So got a nice animation going there. I'm going to go ahead and do another save. Now we need to create our treads and we need to create some deformation as it goes over. Let's go ahead and start with the tire treads. Now if you're really good with Photoshop or uh, similar programs, photo editing software, you can go online and find you a, some tire treads and you can probably manipulate the tire treads or the texture uh, in Photoshop to match your, your uh, animation curve. But to make this easier, I'm going to do everything inside Maya. So we're going to create the texture with Maya. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go and put this ground plane since we don't need it anymore. I'm going to put it on a layer. And I'm going to hide that layer. I'll go ahead and name that layer. Layer underscore hide. Just a layer I can hide stuff on for now. All right, I'm going to go into a top view. Turn my grid off. Actually, I'll leave the grid on for now because I'm going to need that to show you something. I'm going to go to the View menu, down to Image Plane, over to Import Image, and we're going to import that picture of those tire treads. So I'm going to click that, 
Maya looks inside the source images folder, and that's why I put those files inside that source images folder when we first started. I'm going to select the tire, click open, puts it in our view panel. With it still selected, if you notice, it's in front of my grid. That means when I create some geometry, it's going to create it where this grid is. But I want it to be in front of this image, so I want to move this image away from the camera. And I'm looking from above, so I'm looking from the positive Y direction. So to move this away from the camera, I need to, over here in the channel box, the center Y, I need to make it a negative value. It doesn't matter. I can make it negative 1, negative 1,000, just move it away. So I'm going to go ahead and make mine negative, negative I'll just do negative 100. Okay, it's behind our grid. I'm going to turn my grid off just so I can see the image a little better. And we're just going to recreate the shapes. And it looks like the tire is cut off. So whoever got this tread, it looks like they whacked off the, the left and right side. But that's okay. This will still work for the purposes of this tutorial, this video. We're going to create it by going to our polygon menu set. Go up to mesh, down to... And actually, let's go ahead and end this session so these videos aren't too long, and we'll pick it back up in part two. So uh, I'll just go ahead and save it here, and we'll pick up in the next part.